Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem is two plants with white flowers each from true breeding strains were crossed. All the F1 plants had red flowers. When these F1 plants were intercrossed they produced an F2 consisting of 177 plants with red flowers and 142 plants with white flowers. And here are the two questions. Question number one or A assuming that two independently assorted genes dictate flower color given the data above provide an explanation for the inheritance of the flower color in this plant species. And second question propose a biochemical pathway for flower pigmentation and indicate which genes control which steps of the pathway. So here is how we are going to solve this problem. Imagine that plant has multiple chromosomes. For example, this is going to be chromosome number one. And of course, plant has two copies of the chromosome number one, just like any diploid organism. And also, let's say, let's take, for example, pair of chromosomes, which is going to be number 12. On the chromosome number one, we have gene A. So here we have gene A, here and here. And on the chromosome number 12, we have gene B. So let's say here is going to be gene B and here is going to be gene B. With capitalized letter, I specify that this is normally functioning gene, in this case two normal alleles, but with lowercase I specify alleles which are defective and doesn't produce working product. Now imagine that gene A produces certain protein which would be modified by the gene B, but if this gene B would be defective, in this case it's not going to be modified. So in this case, the result color of the plant is going to be white. So plant is going to be white. Now imagine different situation when we have, for example, the same two chromosomes, number one, but here instead of two dominant allele A's, we have two recessive allele A's. And on the chromosome number 12, number 12, this time instead of defective to recessive alleles B for the gene P, we have two dominant alleles P. And in this case, what's going to happen? In this case, the product which we see in this first variant is not going to be produced. So O would be short version O defective. So even if gene B can produce normal enzyme which would be able to modify this protein so it would make red pigment instead again because this gene A both alleles are defective this initial protein is also defective and this enzyme which produced by two normal alleles is not going to help us to make red pigment. Again, this would result in a flower with white pigment. So as you see, this is going to be, in the first example, this is going to be strain number one, which has different genotype if we compare with the strain number two, which result in white flowers. And strain number two, has different genotype, but again, result is the same. So both these genotypes do not produce red pigment. Those due to different mutations. So let me show you again. Genotype of the first parent capital A, capital A and small b, small b. We cross with genotype of the second parent, which is small a, small a and capital B capital B. So this is strain number one, this is strain number two. And such a cross would result in a progeny 
which are going to be capital A small a and capital B small b. And according to our problem, all F1 generation, so this is going to be F1 generation, are going to produce red pigment in flowers, 100%. So what we are going to see here, we are going to see that uh, for the gene A, we have one normal allele A, dominant allele A, which are going to produce normal protein, which is going to be substrate for the normal allele B in the second pair. Normal allele B would produce normal enzyme, which would convert this uh, protein into pigment, which is red pigment. So we are going to see, in this case, red flowers. And this is because we have in each pair one dominant allele, which produce normal uh, working protein. Protein here and enzyme here. So we answered the first question, how two true breeding strains, strain one and strain two, true breeding for white color, when we cross them, would produce 100% F1 generation, which are going to be pigmented with red pigment. So flowers with red pigments. What do we mean by true breeding? That means that when we cross plants of the strain number one, which are, take a look, genotype capital A, capital A, small b, small b, with itself, with the same strain, we always will get flowers which are going to be white. And strain number two, those having different genotype, small a, small a, and capital B, capital B, when we cross with itself, again, result would be only white flowers. So we call this true breeding, because for this trait, we always are going to get the same result. Now let's return to our question. In F2 generation, we see that 177 plants with red flowers and 142 plants with white flowers. How we are going to explain this? Take a look. In order to get F2 generation, we have to take parents from F1 generation. And all of them are going to be of the same genotype. All F1 generation are going to be heterozygous for both genes. Here is going to be our cross, capital A, small a, capital B, small b, one parent, and the same genotype for the second parent. So this is how we are going to get F2 generation. So we just take two parents from F1 generation. Parent one here and parent two here is going to be of the same genotype. What kind of gametes they would produce from each pair? gamete would have only one allele. So we have two pairs and the first variant would be capital A and capital B, capital A, capital B. Second variant would be capital A and small b. So capital A and small b. Third variant would be small a and capital B, small a, capital B. And the last variant of the gametes would be small a and small b small a and small b. So this is going to be gametes produced by parent one and parent two are going to produce the same gametes because parent one and two have the same genotype. So the gametes produced by parent two are going to be the same as parent one. So let's list them capital A and capital B, capital A and small b, and also small a and capital B, and small a and small b. Now let's build simple Punnett square. So we have a table with four columns and four rows. So one, two, three and four. Now let's list all the possible genotypes of this F2 generation capital A, capital A, capital B, capital B, 
capital A, capital A, capital B, small b, capital A, small A, capital B, capital B, capital A, small A, capital B, small b, capital A, capital A, capital B, small b, capital A, capital A, and small b, small b, next capital A, small a, and capital B, small b, capital A, small a, small b, small b, capital A, small a, capital B, capital B, capital A, small a, capital B, small b, small a, small a, capital B, capital B, and small a, small a, capital B, small b, and the last column, capital A, small a, capital B, small b, capital A, small a, small b, small b, small a, small a, and capital B, small b, and small a, small a, small b, small b. Now let's circle all genotypes according to the phenotype. So this genotype would produce red pigment, red pigment here, red pigment here, red pigment here, red pigment here, but next one would produce white pigment, next one red pigment, and next one white pigment, next one red pigment, next one also red pigment, but next one white pigment here, white pigment here, next one red pigment and white pigment, white pigment here and white pigment here. Now let's count how many we have of the red pigment. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 9 pigmented and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, which are not pigmented or white. So our ratio is 9 to 7 pigmented to non-pigmented. Now let's return to our problem. So what do we have here? Uh, when this F1 plants were intercrossed, they produce an F2 offspring with 177 plants with red flowers and 142 plants with white flowers. So that means that we have here the same ratio 9 to 7. How do I know that this ratio is true? Let's divide these two numbers by 10. And in this case we are going to get, for example, here um, 177. If we divide by 10, roughly we are going to get 18. And if we divide this number by 10, roughly we are going to get 14. Again, we can divide these two numbers by 2. And if we divide them by 2, we are going to get ratio 9 to 7. So these two ratios are the same. And let's check the second question. Propose a biochemical pathway for flower pigmentation and indicate which genes control which steps of the pathway. We already answered this question. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.